In this video, I'm going to cover the fear of the phone. So I'm going to cover why people are scared of the phone and then how they can overcome it. So let's get right into it. So why are you scared to talk on the phone? Why are you scared to pick up the phone? You get in the final expense telesales or insurance sales. And the only way you can make money is if you have conversations with people. So why would you be scared of calling? Most people have some sort of fear of the phone. Hey, I still get it sometimes. I don't really know any agents that don't have any sort of hesitancy or pull pushback or pullback at all when they get on the phone talking to someone. I don't care how long they've done it. There are a few people who don't. But there is some sort of anxiety associated sometimes with some rejection and failure. What if this doesn't go through? So if you're feeling that, then it's totally normal, but we're going to go over how to get over it. So first off, a lot of people have this fear of the phones because we're brought up with a don't talk to strangers mentality. If your parents ever told you don't talk to strangers, keep your hands to yourself, mind your own business let them do their own thing. If you were ever taught that, you got to understand that that's something that you have to break. Now, most of us were taught that. And most of you guys watching this, if you have children, you probably tell your kids the same thing. Don't talk to strangers. However, strangers have everything that we want in life. And whenever we call people, we are bothering strangers. We have permission to bother them because they filled out lead forms. But you have to understand that you have to break that mentality and that mindset in order to overcome your fear of picking up that phone and making calls. It's literally the number one thing that stops agents from being successful at this, the fear of making calls. Because what I see, I see people go through training. I see people watch hundreds of hours of my, well, not hundreds, tens of hours of my YouTube content. I see people study for their license exam. They go through all this trouble and put in all this hard work to start selling insurance. And then when it comes to them to start getting on the phone, they are absolutely terrified to pick up that phone and make that phone call, even if it's just click to call through a CRM. They're scared of calling strangers and they're scared of failing in making those calls, okay? Now, the reality is that strangers have everything that you guys want. So what I want you to do is go through your list of leads and understand that all of those people on those lead forms have something that could help you improve your situation in your life. Anything that you don't have right now can be remedied by talking to enough people, just about everything. And you may say, well, that's not the case, but I'm gonna list off some things here that may help you understand otherwise. An example, say if you're really sick, and you talk to the right doctor. If you talk to enough doctors, you're really sick. No one can figure out what's going on. If you talk to the right doctor, you find the right doctor. They're going to create a solution for you and be able to fix your ailments. If you don't have any money and you're struggling paying your bills, if you talk to enough people, you're going to get enough people to buy insurance from you so that you can pay your bills and not struggle anymore. So you have to understand first off that strangers have the key to all of our successes and what we want out of life. So you really, really have to adopt that mindset first off and you have to get rid of the idea that strangers are scary to talk to. Okay. By the way, if you find value in this and any of my other content, please subscribe to my channel, turn on post notifications and hit the bell button so that you are notified every time I drop a new video. So in adopting the idea that strangers can actually help us, we have to also adopt the idea that we can help them because that's really what we're doing, guys. And it's real. there's really nothing to be scared of. And I know that's so easy to, to, to say because... I have new agents start and I literally have to hold their hand to make their first calls. I have to jump in a Zoom room with them. I have to have them share their screen and I have to manually remote into their computer and click to call. Because they're going to say, oh, I have to practice my script. I have to do this. I have to be perfect. And some of you may be feeling this too. I'm going to say the wrong thing. I'm going to screw up. I'm going to waste my money on leads. The most important thing is, is just do it. Now, there are a few ways that you can just do it. Because if it, was the, if it was as easy as just doing it, more people would actually do it. But next time you go into your dial sessions, you prepare for it. What I want you to see, every time you look at a lead, I want you to understand that that person has a family. That person has beneficiaries that are relying on you. Okay, That person is relying on you. And their beneficiaries are relying on you to make sure that this person gets that coverage in place so that when they pass away they're not screwed financially so that may help appeal to some nobler motives for you also you got to get super set and sold on your goals like i'm not really scared to call people anymore because and i get excited about the anxiety that i get from calling people because i understand like i am so committed to my goals in accomplishing what i want in my life for myself that it doesn't even matter like making those calls is not a big deal it does not matter to me it's 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 like it's part of the process 
Okay, so commit to yourself, commit to your purpose in insurance is to provide people with coverage so that their families are okay and commit to your goals. That can help you overcome that fear. So if you're feeling anxious about the phones, write down your goals and think about why you want to accomplish them. Because thinking about having to make the calls, thinking about about what, what you got to do, how many calls you have to make, who you're going to call. Think about what could happen if they say no. What can happen if someone picks up the phone and yells at you or whatever it may be. That's, that's like a boring thing to focus on. That's not energizing at all. But what is energizing is focusing on what you want and why you want it. So why you want to accomplish the things you want to accomplish in your life. And it, this gets really back to deeper things, which is your why. Because if your why is strong enough and you're committed enough to accomplishing those things, then these little fears that we get and anxieties of picking up that phone and making those calls, they disappear because we, we're seeing past that. We're seeing these are stepping stones to get where we need to go. And I promise you, you're going to grow to the degree that you're uncomfortable. And you have to get these repetitions and you have to get your reps in. It's like if you, if you exercise, right? The first time doing a new exercise, it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to be sore the next day. You're not going to really be walking right. If you do squats for the first time or say you haven't done squats in a while, or you do some heavy squats on a leg day, man, you're going to have a rough time the next day. Walking around is not going to feel comfortable, but you understand that that pain is part of the growth process. No pain, no gain. So you have to sit through this and don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes if you make them once. That's what my first, uh, the first guy who was, who hired me to sell insurance said, mistakes are okay, Justin, as long as you make them once. But experience alone is not good for us. It's not beneficial. The insight that we gain from experience is beneficial. So you're going to get experience going through these calls that are in this, this experience will provide insight that will help remove anxiety as you make more calls going forward. Because what's going to happen is you're going to run into clients saying certain things to you. You're going to run into like giving you objections and you're going to run into roadblocks that you can then reflect on and analyze and then you, that way when you analyze it you can adjust your tactics so that you can go into the next call better suited to handle whatever they're going to throw at you which really gets into as well this next thing is role playing and preparing now you can role play as much as you want you can prepare as much as you want and it helps you a lot but there's nothing like actually getting in the calls and doing the real thing. So what I what I think can, a lot of people get anxious about is failing. And failing is is it's totally part of this process. And I've failed so many times, guys, in insurance that like, honestly, I kind of brag about it now, right? I kind of brag about my failures now. You, you're going to be scared of failing. You're going to be scared of wasting money on leads. But you literally have to go through this stuff. You have to go through this stuff in order for you to grow and for you to get over that fear of the phone in making those calls. So one thing that I like to practice is in, in role playing is, is actually is sitting with someone and role playing with someone else. Now, if you don't have a family member or friend that can help you, then I would reach out to someone at your IMO. That's actually probably more desirable. Reach out to someone at your IMO who will role play with you. And if they won't, then ask a friend or family member. And if they won't, then you want to record yourself on your phone. Because I can tell the agents that are the most scared of getting on the phone are you usually the ones that practice the least to begin with. So when I have a new agent start, I ask everybody to, to download their script and print it out and read it 20 times. By the way, if you want a copy of my script, just email me at jve at the jve.com. That's jve at the jve.com. Now when going through those scripts, what you're going to, what you're going to see is that the, the more you practice it, the more you're going to get it down. Now what you really want to practice though on your script is handling the objections that come up in the greeting. Actually, if you look up right here in this video, I have a video on how to handle every objection that you're going to ever get in final expense telesales. And in that I do cover objections that you're going to receive in the greeting. So watch that right there. And that'll help you understand the, uh, the, how to overcome these things and how to build your confidence in handling those objections in the greeting because a lot of time I remember when I started it was like I pick up the phone and I would be like oh my god what if they tell me they already have insurance what if they tell me they're not interested what if, they, if I'm setting appointments it's what if they tell me that they that they're all set they took care of it now once you know how to handle and overcome those things you actually look forward to them saying them and, and if you don't end up looking forward to them saying them what you're gonna see is that you know what they're gonna say and you can easily work around it. Now, those uh, those rebuttals, they're not going to work on every single person that tells you they're not interested. And they're not going to work on every single person who tells you that they already have insurance. But once you have those down, guys, you have to memorize those. You have to get those down because at least you're going to know what to say to move on. I am extremely confident right now in the greeting of a call. And, and I'll tell you this. Once you get through the greeting, the rest is easy. Now, what the mindset that I like to take when I go through the greeting of a call, and this helped me overcome my fears, was, okay, I am here, I wanna make a friend. And when I focused on making a sale, it gave me a little anxiety. 
I don't know. That's just how I am. When I was like, I have to sell this person a policy. I made it feel real transactional. And, and I know I was making an impact on the beneficiary's life, but I wanted to make an impact on the client's life as well, on the, on the life of that person. So I got into my calls now and, and the, what helps me overcome that and makes me want to talk to someone because I'm a sociable person. I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy having friends. I enjoy sharing good experiences with other people. I enjoy giving people a good experience. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy making people smile. I love that. Like it's a big fulfillment to me to have other people uh, be happy around me. And I, and I like helping other people be happy. So what I did going into my calls was say, okay, I am going to make this person happy. And when I started to take that approach, when I said, I'm going to have a positive impact on this person's day, instead of making a sale, I'm going to have a positive impact on this person's day. And I'm going to leave them in a better position now than I did when I first got on the phone with them. It changed the, it changed the game for me. It changed my mindset because I went from, okay, all about me, 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 sale, 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 sale. What am I getting out of it to what is the client getting out of it? Now people pay for a good experience. Okay. And I like to feel good. And I know if I'm feeling good and if I make the other person feel good, it's going to help me feel good too. So this really, really helped me take the right approach on my sales calls to say, okay, I'm going to go into this, not with the intention of making a sale. I'm going to give them a good experience and make them feel good. Cause I promise all your clients that buy from you feel good about you because they're buying from you. They're, they can buy a final expense policy anywhere. I promise this is not the first time they saw a final expense. And if they don't like you, there's a much better chance they're going to cancel or replace the policy elsewhere. So go in saying, I'm going to give this person a good experience. It helps you maintain a better tonality in the beginning as well. And it helps you be more focused on, on how can you help this person. So for example, if I'm going into the call and, and I see the woman names, woman's name is Betty Jones. And I'm like, man, you know, my grandmother's name was Betty. I already love Betty. I, I love Betty because I'm thinking of my grandmother. She's reminding me of her. And when I talk to Betty, I'm, I'm, it's almost like I'm having a conversation with my grandmother. And I love my grandmother. She made a big impact on my childhood. Rest in peace, Nanny. So I go in, I'll go into the call. Be like, hey, Betty. Hey, Betty. How are you doing today? Like I just get, I get very excited to talk to her because she has the same name as my grandmother. Now, what you're going to understand, too, is that they're going to give you some pushback. So they're going to they're going to they're probably going to give you some pushback. So she's going to go in and even though you're excited, if you're excited to talk to her. There's less of a chance that she's going to give you a ton of resistance. You're going to kind of break that down. But when she does, what you're going to understand, too, is that she's just scared of you. And most of these people, when you get on the phone, are scared of them. Now, if it's for me personally. I'm, I'm a big, a little bit bigger of a guy. I weight lift and eat a lot of food and stuff. And if someone came up to me and said, man, you're scary, I would feel bad about that because I'm not a mean person. Like I, I try to be nice to everybody. And, and so I, I don't consider myself a mean person. If someone told me they were scared of me, I would kind of feel bad. So it's like I look at it like this. When I get a client on the phone and I want you guys to try to adopt this view, OK? Imagine that all your leads are stray animals in a shelter. <laughs> OK, it sounds kind of crazy, but imagine they're all stray animals in a shelter. The cutest little dogs and, or cats if you're a cat person. I'm not a cat person. Maybe you are. I don't know. But imagine the cutest little cats, dogs, whatever type of pet it is that you have. And you go in and they're all scared of you because the last person that they talked with beat them up. OK, the last owner that they had beat them up. So you got to understand that a lot of these people have had bad experiences on the phone. That's the only reason why they're giving you pushback. If phone calls were never a threat for people's money or identities or personal security, they wouldn't be as hesitant to receive the call and to take the call. OK, so when you get someone on the line, understand that they're just scared of you. And, and, and so what I would do in my head, I'd be like, man, I just got a scared person here in order me to give them a good in order for me to give them a good experience and to make a friend and to give them a reason to hang when they hung up the phone to be like, man, I love talking to that guy. I have to understand that they're just scared and I have to level with them. It's a, it's a mental game right there. It's a mental, emotional game at the beginning. So, hey, Betty. Yep. Hey, Betty, this is Justin. How are you doing today? Good. Awesome, Betty. I'm glad to hear that. I'm doing great, too. Now, I'm with my name's Justin. I'm with Senior Life Services. And the reason for my call is that yada, 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 you requested some information on burial insurance. She says, oh, no, no, I already had that. Hey, <laughs> Betty, Betty, I completely understand it. I would be surprised if you didn't. You know, most people I speak with are just like you. They have insurance. But they all find this information really valuable. And I'm not asking to make any changes, I promise. So your tonality is very important. You see how I was addressing her. Like she was scared. So I wanted to pacify her fears of me trying to push her to do something and to make changes to her policy that she's so excited about getting that maybe she doesn't even have because a lot of times people lie when they tell you that they have insurance already. So you want to handle them like they're scared because that's all it is. So I go into a call and, and it's, it's I probably sound like a complete wuss or wimp saying this, but 
they're they're like I know these people are scared and anxious and intimidated to talk to me. Okay, so I have to overcome that and I have to work on helping them get through that and helping them overcome their fear of me to understand that I am an okay person to talk to because they're not scared of insurance. They're not scared of that. They're scared of a person treating them poorly and, and not respecting what they want and not giving them what they want, getting them on common ground. So it's important, guys, that adopting that mindset really, really helped me get into a call. Like, I just want to make someone laugh. That's it. If you can make someone laugh, my God, like you're going to get the chance of you getting a sale. If you get someone laughing, the chances you get in a sale are a lot higher. Right. And this is to any any like this is like to guys. Right. Guys. Hey, look, if you're a single guy and, and, and you want to get with a girl and you, you, you got a crush on a girl and you kind of want to like get to know her a little bit and, and go on a date with her and have her keep going on dates with you. I'm telling you, if you make her laugh, you get a much better chance of her wanting to go on another date with you. So same with clients. If you make them laugh, you get a much better chance of them wanting to buy a policy from you because the guard drops. The guard drops. It just goes right down. And it's fun to make someone laugh. Practice these in the beginning and take the mindset that you're helping people. You're going to have to drill this and you're going to have to go through this a bunch of times because what happens is being scared of the phones. It's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, according to uh, health experts at the University of Washington, when you're afraid, the blood in the frontal lobe of your brain, it moves back more towards the, the amygdala, which is like the reptilian portion of it, the, uh, the primitive portion. And that's a very fight or flight response. The frontal lobe is where you do your higher level thinking right up here because the brain has has evolved like this way okay from this brain from the brain stem all the way up the further it, are, it is towards our forehead that's supposed to be the most advanced part of our brain now what happens is when you're scared the blood pulls back from there and goes to your amygdala it becomes more active it causes us to get uh, get more anxious in fight or flight so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because we're scared of failing on the phone, which then gets us into a more fight or flight response, and then we run from the phone, so we're gonna fail at it. Or we get on the phone, and everything we practice completely goes out the window, because we're terrified, and we, we're stammering on our script, our tonality is all off. We think that 76-year-old Betty is going to rip a, a claw-covered hand through the phone and just rip our throats out. And it's just not going to happen. So you got, you got nothing to be scared of. And, and doing the repetitions is like, whew, okay, wow, whew, she hung up on me. Nothing bad happened. Sometimes it can be scarier for a client to say yes when you first start than it can be for them to say, I don't want insurance. Because if they're like, yeah, let me get that. You're like, oh, my gosh, I haven't done an application yet. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. Like... It's, it can be challenging, but you have to you have to role play it. I recommend practicing the whole presentation from the beginning to the end. That way you know, hey, I know how to get them through the greeting. I know the right questions to ask. Knowing the right questions to ask is important. Role playing that. Knowing how to present the product. Knowing how to close and go through your rebuttals and practicing those and getting those drilled down. And then knowing how to complete an application. That's very important because I see agents get terrified of the close, not because they're scared that the person's going to say no. They're scared that the person's going to say yes because they don't know how to do an application. So the more you practice these things, the, the better you're going to get. Now, you do have to actually implement them and get on the phone and make those calls. Okay. So I recommend like seven hours of training, six to seven hours of training for every 40 hours you have on the phone. So what? it's about two hours a day. If you work a 40, if you work a 50 hour work week, you're going to put about two hours a day training. You're going to do role playing. You're going to be researching common competitors because you can get scared if someone gives you a common competitor. You can get you can do you can do it researching something else. I want you guys to think about something that you have done over the last 10, 15, 20 years of your life that you're confident in, that you really like and that you know that you're good at. I promise everybody on here has something that they know that they're good at. So I want you to think about that. And what I want you to think is if someone came up to you who has never done it before and was scared about doing it, how you would tell them what you would tell them to do. So, hey, it's going to take you some time. You just got to get into it. You just got to try it. OK, now I hope this helped you guys overcome any of these fears that you're going to run into on the phone. If you like this content, please subscribe to my channel. Turn on post notifications by hitting the bell. Also, if you look up. Uh, well, I'm going to go over a couple things first here before I give you another sneak peek there. But what can also help to overcome on the phone? Before I go, I want to tell you this. You, if you have an accountability buddy or a peer support partner, I like to call them that. I hate the word accountability. I don't know why. I'm very self-accountable, but for some reason, I don't hate it. It's just got like a negative connotation for me. Like I'm going to hold you accountable. Right? It's a peer support. I like to say like if you find, get a support partner and you guys just get in a Zoom call together or go to an office together and make calls together, make those dials together so that you can see someone else going through the same thing as you. Because this can be a really lonely business. You can be at home by yourself like, oh my God, I am getting beat up right now on the phone. 
So it can be a lonely business and you guys have to push through that. What can help you push through that fear and that feeling of anxiety and loneliness, it can be having someone else there with you, okay? So at the end of the day, um, the more you do this, the less you're gonna fear it. You'll start to not see it as like a threat to you anymore. You're not gonna see the phone as a threat. You're gonna say, hey, this thing makes me money. The more conversations I have on this thing makes me money. And then also too, what you can start to do is work backwards. So, so you, once you get your numbers and your baseline numbers of how many calls it takes to make a sale and how many presentations it, makes to, it takes to make a sale, you're going to be able to take those numbers and work backwards. So you're going to say, hey, okay, I had 3,000 AP this week. I made 150 phone calls. I know that if I want to hit 10,000 AP, I'm going to probably have to hit about 500 phone calls. I'm going to shoot for 600 this week. And we'll see where that goes. So once you go backwards like that, it can put a more analytical approach on it as well. That way, you know, hey, if I hit these numbers, I'm probably going to end up with this number here because you have to have contacts to have presentations and you have to have presentations to have sales. OK, so there's a few different ways to look at this. I hope this helps you guys overcome your, your fear of dialing. Um, train on the phone, train on phone sales apply what you learn watch my content if you if you watch all the content on my channel for that sales base it's going to give you a lot more confidence on the phone i can tell you that if you watch all my videos and you and you learn what's in those you're going to get so much more confident on the phone selling final expense over the phone or any type of insurance over the phone that you're going to have the knowledge going in with and you're going to know what to say you do have to start applying it it's another reason why i recommend people buy a ton of aged leads if you want to source for aged final expense leads reach out to me why do I recommend that? Because you can get beat up and you can you can pound the leads and you can get used to it. They, they may be a little rougher around the edges than the brand new leads. So it's good to get experience to that. You get to get exposed to that first because then, you know, if you can handle that, you can handle any lead. Really, if you can sell age leads over the phone, you can sell any type of lead. Then you can get into live transfers and TV leads and all that, all that stuff. Now, one thing that's really going to help you, one video in particular that I know is really going to help you is this video right here. So if you if right on this side of the screen here. There is a video. It's going to be on how to handle every objection in final expense telesales. Get those rebuttals down. And your confidence to pick up that phone is going to skyrocket. I hope this helped you guys today, and I hope it helps you all make a lot more money. Thank you.